Welcome back to another full day of eating video narrated by me, Manders, and my mini microphone. Oh my god, Manders and the mini microphone. Okay, <laughs> so today's video, I want to kind of walk you through just my meals, the timing of them. As you can see, this is pre-workout of the usual egg white veggie scramble and oatmeal, but I also wanted to include my training today and kind of just talk a little bit about like just some very basic CrossFit and weightlifting cues. So here I am working up to a heavy single front squat. Love Austin checking me out there in the background, <laughs> acting like he's doing something. And prior to this, I had a little snatch complex, which honestly was just three sets. It was nothing crazy. And the percentages were really low, which is why I didn't include it in this video. But here I was working up to a heavy single. So I wanted to kind of give you some things that help me when I am preparing for a heavy lift. When I'm working up towards the heavy single, I start with, in the lower percentages, a set of five, a set of four, a few sets of three, a few sets of two. And then once I get up to like my 80, 85 percentage range, then I start just doing singles and that's when I add my belt. I get that question quite frequently. When should you put your weightlifting belt on? And for me personally, I don't like to use it until I get to 80, 85 percentage, but this is going to be individualized based on your specific needs. I just like to try to rely on bracing my core before actually putting my belt on. My knee sleeves, I don't wrap until I'm going for that heavy single. So like anything past 95 percent or just really heavy percentages anyway. So here I am going for, I think this is 215. And it was a little sticky, but one cue that I always really like to focus on is engaging the lats and driving my hips forward when you come out of that sticky spot. And no, what am I saying? That wasn't 215. This is 250. I forgot. I PR'd on this day either way. I think this was... 250 right here and it actually was better than the 245 yeah I can see the two and a half yes and I said okay that's enough for the day I like to call it when I feel like I barely could go a little bit more but I also didn't want to fail so I was really happy about this that was a 15 pound PR I believe and I was just really pumped about it so I like to make sure that I call it on a good note and don't push myself past the point of failure however speaking of failure after that I had to do some god awful sets at I think it was 65 percent of the one rep max that I hit which ended up being 160 for a set of 10 and then a set of eight afterwards oh my god absolutely awful. I hate doing sets of 10 and 8. As you can see, it killed me. So I was happy that that was over. Then we're moving on to the fun part, the CrossFit workout of the day. Uh, I think I talked about this in a previous video. I am only doing these type of Metcon cardio style workouts three times a week right now, and it is working perfectly with my Peloton and running and everything like that. So right now I don't feel overtrained. I still feel good. So today's workout was a 16 minute AMRAP and it was of nine burpee box jump over seven power snatches at 95 pounds five bar muscle ups and 50 double unders. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what I was thinking mentally when I approached this workout. And this is what I always recommend to any CrossFit athletes that are like, I don't coach really too much anymore. But when I did, I would basically say, okay, look at this workout and try to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. For me, I know that 95 pound power snatches after a few rounds are going to slow me down if I try to do sets of them. So I chose right off the bat to go with uh, quick singles. Really anytime there's 95 pounds on the bar, I like to do quick singles unless it's absolutely necessary where I need to do more than that. In a workout like this, I just was aiming for consistency and I knew that my strength here was bar muscle up. So I went unbroken on the set of five each round. And as you can see, I had no problem with that. Um, and for me personally, the bar muscle ups and the double unders are my strength. Anything gymnastics wise is just for me my favorite and just something I excel at. So I did the bar muscle ups and the double unders unbroken. And then I just tried to keep a very slow and steady pace on the burpee box jumps and quick singles on the power snatches. This worked really well. I ended up getting five rounds, which was one of the top scores of the day. So I was really excited about that. Um, and it was just a really good workout overall. I think... One of the things that I also try to think about during workouts when I am working out alone is never going too fast out the gate. This is something that a lot of people do in a class setting. Um, and so just for me, I like to make sure that I start nice and steady. And even though I wasn't competing against anybody in this workout, obviously, 
I try to pick it up towards the end, which is really hard to do, but super beneficial if you're somebody who wants to do competitions. You never want to go out too quickly and then you're burnt by the time the end of the workout is approaching and you did not do as well as you thought you were going to. So I kind of do it the other way in CrossFit. They sometimes call it redlining, but I definitely have a habit of doing that. And I always will try to pick it up towards the very, very last like minute, 30 seconds, whatever, and just go ham at the very end. So this is something that I still practice even when I'm training alone and it's something I tell people as well to practice because if you do compete you want to be able to have that ability instead of emptying your gas tank too early so as you can see right here I just checked the clock and I was struggling a little bit because my rope got tangled but I wanted to get at least whatever that is seven or eight more double unders when the time was ended so I always try to push myself in that capacity and so I guess that was five rounds plus whatever I don't even remember my score but either way it was really good um, that workout was super challenging and here's my disgusting nails that I ripped the gel off of showing you the end of the workout <laughs> then of course you know I'm gonna have my driven iso dry vanilla chocolate chip shake I've been going back to the basics lately because I've been going so crazy with my shake creations that I just wanted to keep it simple today just had to show you the consistency because it's amazing then a couple hours later I had my usual boring ass chicken thigh which by the way the cilantro lime chicken thigh is not boring it's delicious but the basic green beans jasmine rice cilantro lime chicken thigh it is so good and this was my lunch followed by of course as you already know a white Reese's thin Reese's Reese's whatever the heck I get hate for this all the time don't care <laughs> then uh, a couple hours later I think this was around 4 30 I just had a very very easy as you can see like this pace on the treadmill was probably like a five and a half and I had 20 minutes of a recovery run. This is something that I am working on heart rate specific training. So here you can see that my heart rate is staying in zone two. So the goal for this 20 minute run, which ended up being a little over two miles, was keeping my heart rate in zone two the entire time. If it broke into zone three, I needed to stop immediately and make sure that it got back to zone two. And this is just specific for my endurance training that I'm doing. I did a video on that, so I'll put it in the top corner of this video. And then I really wanted this uh, Dr. Prager's chicken something. No, it's not chicken. I'm lying. It's vegan. <laughs> California burger. It is a veggie burger. So delicious. And I put it on a brioche bun with the chili lime mayo from Trader Joe's. A little fresh guac. I'm going to put some dairy-free cheese on it. The Violife cheese. Look at that melt. For dairy-free cheese, are you kidding me? This is a vegan meal. Well, Actually, I don't know if the mayo is vegan, but if you didn't put the mayo on it, it would be a vegan meal. I'm really trying to work on adding some more vegan meals into my intake, but I put some fresh pickles on it because I love pickles. I know this is also something that I get hate for, but you know what? I'm a pickle girl. So then I sat my ass down and scrolled on TikTok because I have an addiction and I can't stop watching TikTok, but I wanted to show the importance of how slow I was eating this burger, even though I sped it up here. I've been really working on trying to eat in a parasympathetic state because I have a horrible habit. Oh, love that this video is all over the place. I forgot to show you this in the morning, these little things I've been putting in my coffee. Absolutely amazing if you've ever had the blueberry latte from Dunkin' Donuts, but this is less sweet than that. So it doesn't give that gross artificial sweetener taste. So fantastic for morning coffee. Uh, then as a little dessert, I had a rice pudding cup, which is also kind of weird. I feel like not very many people like rice pudding, but I freaking love it. It's delicious. <laughs> and then I did my client work. Then at the end of the night, I still was really hungry, so I decided to have one of these little ZZ s'mores bars. I found them at Target. They're so good, and I put a tablespoon of dairy-free Cool Whip on top. Don't know what possessed me to do that, but it was freaking delicious. <laughs> and that's today's eating video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to give it a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in my next one.